every post should go with a video or a picture. If it does happen, I hope Jackie Chan plays me. My issue with the current Apple iPhone you know, product line is... Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Animaker Genius Talk, a talk show where we interview genius minds from the world of videos and transfer some of their amazing knowledge to you. Today we have a legendary guest in the house. I'm very pleased to present to you successful entrepreneur, very successful author and the legendary investor Guy Kawasaki. Welcome Thank to the you. show Guy. I'm so happy Thank to have you. you here today. Thank you. I hope I can live up to that introduction. All right. So the first section of this interview is called the genius journey. Every great story always has a good beginning. So tell us Guy, how your amazing journey started. My amazing journey started at Stanford where I met a guy named Mike Boych who became my roommate. And Mike Boych, after college, uh, went to work for Apple in the Macintosh division. And this is years later and he hired me into the Macintosh division of Apple. So without Mike Boych and nepotism, I would have never gotten into technology. And after I worked at Apple, I started some software companies. I started a venture capital investment bank. I went back to Apple. And today I am chief evangelist of Canva, which is an online graphics design service, a Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador, author, and speaker. All right. So that is the kind of roommate all of us would love to have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next question for you guy is an interview with Guy Kawasaki is never complete without a Steve Jobs story, right? So let's <laughs> yeah. start with one. One day he comes to my cubicle and he's with somebody I've never met and he asks me what I think of a company and its product. And I basically tell him that the company and product are crap and you know, doesn't take advantage of Macintosh, doesn't really, you know, fulfill any strategic need for us. And after I end ripping on this company and this product, he says to me, uh, this is the CEO of the company. <laughs> All right. So that should be one embarrassing moment for you, right? Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, you know, in one sense, yes, I just ripped the guy's company in front of him. But on the other hand, I passed the Steve Jobs test <laughs> because probably Steve Jobs thought the company and product was crap too. So if I had said it was great and Steve knew it was crap, that might have been the end of my career at Apple. Wow. So that's one dangerous place to be. Yeah. Well, you just <laughs> got to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so guy, uh, the DIY community was enthralled when we got to know that you were evangelizing Canva. Yeah. Tell us how that story started. So the Canva story started when Peg Fitzpatrick, who was helping me with social media graphics, started using Canva for my tweets. So she would build a graphic in Canva and tweet it out. And one day, Canva reached out to me on Twitter and asked me, you know, how's it going? And, uh, they're so happy that I'm using Canva. And we got to talking and, and then I said to Peggy, well, is this the company you use? And she said, yes. And I said, well, do you think I should help them? And she said, yes, it's a very good product. And they just happened to be coming to the United States. So a couple of weeks later, I saw them and came to my house. And the next thing is I'm chief evangelist. I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't applying, I wasn't doing anything. It's just because I was using the product. All right. So that's one place where the employer seems to be more lucky than the employee. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, we're both pretty lucky. <laughs> All right. So that's the end of section one, guy. The next okay. section is what we call inside the genius mind. So okay. I'm going to throw some questions at you. I'm going to find maximum value from your answers. I'm going to pass on that value to my audience. All right. Okay. Okay. The first question that I have for you is, the DIY trend seems to be taking over the world. Wix is democratizing websites, Canva is democratizing design, and we at Animaker are on a mission to democratize videos. So the world too seems to be embracing this concept as all of these companies are performing very, very well. So what do you think is the reason is behind this rise of DIY? One of them is the declining costs. So as the internet gets ubiquitous, as computing power gets cheaper, et cetera, et cetera, you know, more people can use it, so more people can do it themselves. So that's one thing. And, I, and coupled with that is, and it's kind of difficult to figure out which came first, but as things get cheaper, more people can use them, then they expect more. And if you expect more, then things get cheaper and better. 
And so it all sort of rolls into one. Um, I started my career democratizing computing with the Macintosh division, and I'm ending my career democratizing design, design with Canva. All right, so that's one great career, guy. <laughs> <laughs> and my next question for you is, investing in tech companies is sort of like finding the right wave along before it actually hits the shore, right? So as an experienced surfer yourself, how do you find the right wave, both in the <laughs> ocean as well as in the business world? You know, of these two extremes where one is you turn around, the wave catches you and you, and you have a great ride. The other is you know exactly where to sit and when to pop up and all that. When you apply this metaphor to entrepreneurship, I think it's much more about being in the right place at the right time. And you cannot underestimate the quality of luck in entrepreneurship, being in the right place at the right time. Now, even if you are in the right place at the right time, you've got to work, you've got to make it happen. I mean, you don't just fall off the wagon, but I think, you know, a lot of it is being in the right place at the right time. And, you know, if you, if you, if you, Look at the venture capital business. Yeah, they make 20 investments and one or two are successful. So if you were a surfer and you took off 20 times and you only caught one or two waves, you would be a total, total failure. So pattern recognition is very difficult, I think, in venture capital and entrepreneurship. All right, so pattern recognition is definitely a very big challenge that <laughs> it is. is facing. All right. So the next question that I have for you guys is that when I started researching for this um, interview and all of the years when I've been following all of your speeches, one strong point that you've been pointing out is that how many tech leaders from across the globe have made the wrong prediction about the future of technology. <laughs> yes, yes. Right? And yeah, including me. <laughs> so I want to ask you, do you find any big tech leaders today who are making that kind of predictions which you believe is going to be completely proved wrong in the future? Oh, proved wrong? I thought you were going to say proved right. <laughs> um, uh, well, most people are not making those kinds of predictions. You know, they, they, they may talk about the next year or two. So, because even the next year or two is difficult, but that's kind of doable. You know, I mean, we can predict now that the internet of things will be big and AI, after 50 years of saying it's gonna be big, will finally be big. Uh, electric cars are going to happen. And so autonomous driving is gonna happen. You know, those kinds of predictions, that's easy. But to have the real, like, you know, something that creates a category that's 10 years away, that's very difficult. And Steve Jobs was one of those kind of people, one of the few. I think, you know, there was Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Walt Disney. You know, that's it for visionaries. All right, so three very great names. Of course, <laughs> every one of us look up to them. All right, guys, the next question I have for you is, no matter how much you tell about how predicting the future is difficult, one yeah. of your predictions about visual marketing seems to have come very true. Today, all our social media walls are filled with images and videos only. In this kind of a, a social media world, what are three tips that Guy Kawasaki can give to marketers around the world to crush okay. it with visual marketing? <laughs> I don't know about crush it, but so uh, one tip is, I think that every post should go with a video or a picture, except on LinkedIn. For some reason, a plain text post with a link on LinkedIn, in my humble opinion, works better than a post with a, a video or a picture. Uh, but that remains to be truly proven, but that's my gut feeling. So that's one. But generally speaking, everything needs eye candy. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is, you know, when in doubt, post. Post too much. The, the concept that uh, you can post too much and people will get upset and stop following you. You know, yeah, that might be true for 0.001% of the people who follow you. But generally speaking, your social media is so busy that 
people are not going to even notice that you posted multiple times. I mean, I, I post 10, 20 times a day. And yeah, yeah, some people complain, but then I reach more people. So, you know, if in doubt, post. It's better to post too much than too little. And the third thing is make sure that your avatar is only your face. You know, it's a tight shot, you know, this kind of shot. It's not you and your Mustang. It's not you and your surfboard. It's just your face. And the cover photo behind, that's where you should tell your story. You know, showing you surfing, showing you with your family, et cetera, et cetera. But the avatar should be just your face or if it's a company, it should be just your logo. All right, three very important tips that I think everybody should start following right away. <laughs> right, the next question I have for you is, today I think we can all agree that not enough brands out there are really tapping into the power of visual marketing. Especially in 2019 when the social media world was filled with videos, I don't see enough number of brands leveraging the power of um, visual marketing yet. What do you think is stopping them? And what is one piece of advice that you'll give to them that will convince them to start right away? Yeah, well, you know, uh, visual marketing is not that easy, right? So you, you have to have the technique of how you create the video, how you create the graphics, although Canva definitely fixes that problem. But so it's partially that. And, you know, if, if you are a Fortune 500 brand um, and you're so used to going to an agency and saying, you know, here's $50 million, do an ad campaign. And all of a sudden, now you've got to figure out, well, you know, which picture do I post? I mean, so I guess you could punt that and go to an agency too. So I think it's the sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat, tactical, you know, boots on the ground that is foreign to many big brands. And I also think that big brands have heard the horror stories of, you know, some executive made a tweet that was racist or stupid or you know united breaks the guitar and somebody makes a viral song etc cetera, etc cetera. so they're very afraid of the spontaneity and the quantity of posts that social media requires as opposed to you know you make a few ads a year uh, using an agency you run it on the super bowl you know you're probably not going to antagonize too many people with a super bowl ad but one tweet could do it all right, so that is definitely one reason why they're not doing it. But what is your one advice to them to start motivating them? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, social media is fast and free and ubiquitous. How, how can you argue with that? So, you know, get with it. All right, so when it comes from you, that is true motivation. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, the next question I have for you is, I love one of your famous advice that you've given to companies make yeah. meaning to make money yep i've always been fascinated with that but when a company is starting out right now how do you think they can find their meaning well uh, you raise a very good point i mean in a sense uh if you look at the companies who have made a lot of money and and also have made a lot of meaning you know the question is which came first so did apple decide to democratize computing and smartphones to make meaning, to make people more creative and productive, and then they made money? Or did they, you know, fall off a wagon, get very lucky, sell a lot of phones and computers, and then after the fact said, oh yeah, you know, we don't just sell phones and computers, we have democratized technology. You could make an argument either way, but I think that, you know, regardless of which came first, successful companies truly have changed the world and made people's lives better. Except with the examples of banking. You know, I can't, I can't wrap my mind around the thought that banking has improved people's lives, investment banking, you know, that kind of thing. But people who make products and services, they've made people's lives better. And if you don't make people's lives better, you're not gonna succeed. All right, so that is one piece of advice that any company founder should definitely take. <laughs> Alright guys, we've come to the end of section 2. Uh, the next section is okay. what we call picking the genius brain. I'm going to throw okay. some questions at you. I want, you okay. to, I want you to give me quick answers without much of okay. time. Alright? Okay. Perfect. What defines a great product, form or function? You have to have both. You cannot separate the two. Alright. Next question. 
do you believe that the latest iPhones would have made it to market in the same form and function that they are in if Steve Jobs was still around? The very latest? Ah, <sighs> uh, that is a good question. You know, um, it, my my issue with the current Apple iPhone you know, product line is that's the cleverest name you can think of. Uh, give me a break. So I think that, in a sense, more is less. I mean, there's so many models from, to pick from. You know, which one do you get? I don't. I don't know. It's not that easy anymore. So I don't think Steve would have had a situation like this. I don't think. But you know, I mean, he he set the whole iPhone thing into motion. So maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> All right, so that's a great answer, and I have a follow-up question for you. Apple without Steve Jobs, do you think yeah. it's the same, or is it different now? Wow, well, there's no way it can be the same because he was such a force of nature. So, you know, that would be like saying, "Well, what do you think of Hawaii without an ocean?" Well, it ain't Hawaii. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's completely, completely different. And you know, I think the, the challenge for Apple. Is to not continue to revise Macintosh and iPhone, but it's to create another category. So you know, you create the category of personal computer, you create the category of smartphone, you create the category of tablet. What's the next category? Not how do you evolve the existing category? How do you create another category? So maybe the watch will be that, right? But. I don't know Apple TV maybe, but it's it's a different category. It's not the same. All right, okay. Inventing a new category is definitely not an easy task without a visionary nope. like Steve Jobs. <laughs> it's it's difficult with a visionary. Like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So, guy, we all love your books, for the, but for the people who haven't still checked out your latest book, Wise Guy, give us yeah. one reason why they should go right away and pick it up. Because I have two more kids with a lot of tuition, so <laughs> <laughs> the wise guy is a compilation of stories and the wisdom that each story taught me. And I, listen, this is not a memoir or autobiography. It's not going to be made into a movie. You know, it's not like I overcame addiction or overcame abuse or overcame you know utter poverty. So. The, course of my life hasn't been that dramatic but you know between the extremes of you know landed in the United States with just a suitcase to born into you know Donald Trump's family um, I'm in the middle and I think most people are in the middle so they can relate to these stories uh, this book is great for parents who want to you know just tell their kid hey just read this chapter just you know don't believe me believe this guy all right, so we got to see a couple of Jobs movies. A Kawasaki movie is definitely one that I'd love to watch. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, trust me. But <laughs> if it does happen, I hope Jackie Chan plays me. <laughs> wow, that will be a wonderful sight. All right, <laughs> so guy, one last question. What is yes. one message you have for the Animaker community? Never ask your customer to do something that you would not do. And. This can be in terms of using CAPTCHA to get an account, submitting a credit card before you even, you know, can open an account. It's these kinds of things. And you know, in the animation business, I mean, let's just say that there is an action camera that, uh, you know, has a desktop app and it has a smartphone app and the smartphone app and the desktop app don't at all work together and, and similarly and so you never know you know do I import it into my phone and if it's in my phone then what do I do with my desktop and how do I move it here and, you know where is the file and all that you know you should never put your customer through that all right so that is definitely a great piece of advice that we should definitely take Guys, thank you so much for spending your time All with right. us today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, show as much as we enjoyed learning from you. Thank you, and I hope everybody takes a look at Wise Guy. It's, it's available everywhere now. Guys, if you really enjoyed the show, go ahead and click on the like button and the subscribe icon. And if you want to see your favorite influencers on this show, go ahead and comment below, and we'll make sure to get them for the future episodes. Until then, take care and stay safe. This is Arvind from Team Animaker signing off.